Honorable Deputy Chief Minister Shri D. K. Shiv Kumar, Minister Mr. Patel, Minister Mr. Kharge, uh, colleagues from the industry, other dignitaries, and delegates present today. Good morning. You know, I joined Wipro in 2007, which was the same year that I moved to Bengaluru. At that time, the IT industry was valued at almost 50 billion, about $47 billion. And last year, it reached almost $250 billion, which is about 245 to be precise. This means that the industry has grown almost five times in the last 16 years. I don't know too many industries that have done that in the same short span of time. Technology has a multiplier effect, as is evident by the position that the IT industry occupies in our country today and in the state. The industry contributes nearly 8% of the GDP compared to 1% of the GDP 30 years ago. It employs by the, more than 5 million people, and this number has doubled in the last 10 years, and I'm quite confident that it will double again in the next 10. With more than 40% of these talent, of the Indian software talent in India, in Karnataka, the state has had a significant impact on this journey. Karnataka has the third largest among all Indian states. Despite comprising only 5% of the nation's population, Karnataka generates 11% of India's new formal jobs, thus outperforming its, form, its population share. The IT industry is also on the, brink, on the brink of disruptive change and a huge opportunity. We have the youngest and the largest workforce in the world. We have a proven business model and a global reputation. And we are at an upturn of a long-term technology investment cycle driven by the advancements in new technologies like artificial intelligence and particularly Gen AI, 5G, industry cloud platforms, and sustainable technology. And I believe, like as in the past cycles with these disruptive technologies, they can transform industries, they can boost economic growth, improve quality of life, and safeguard the environment. But only, only if we create, extend, and apply them in a responsible manner. A key factor driving our industry's success and the future growth, I believe, is a robust collaboration with government. The government has been a reliable ally for the industry over the years, whether it was through the creation of STPI or special economic zones in the early stages, the surge in telecommunications, or by designating the sector as essential services, which allowed us to pro provide services seamlessly during the pandemic. Karnataka has also always been a vital location for Wipro and will continue to be so. In our IT business, we have six major campuses in Bengaluru and one in Mysuru, where we employ more than 30,000 people across the state. Bangalore also serves as the headquarters for our sister business, which is Wipro Enterprises Limited in the consumer care space, in the infrastructure engineering space, and in the healthcare space. We have invested more than 2,000 crores in the state and have 10 manufacturing facilities employing over 2,500 people, and have most recently set up a plant at the KIDB Aerospace SEZ um, in the last year. Human capital, I believe, is the most important driver of social economic development. It is estimated that nearly 4 lakh people, 400,000 people will join the workforce in Karnataka each year. While this is a great testament to the strength and robustness of our economy, it also means that there will be a tremendous pressure on our state's resources. Nowhere is this more evident than in the city of Bengaluru. Bengaluru is more than just the IT capital of India. It is the epicenter of science, of biotechnology, of pharma, of semiconductor design, as well as the startup capital of India. It has the most unicorns and also the most number of rising philanthropists in the country today. If we have to maintain this technological leadership and sustain this growth, we need to continue to invest in world-class infrastructure. We need to have the ability to skill and upskill our workers continuously. And we need to invest in education and healthcare, especially for the most vulnerable sections of our society. And we need to do this in a very short span of time. It's uplifting to see Karnataka's investments in establishing top-notch educational institutions, hospitals, and a robust digital network, all of which I believe have fueled a swift increase in the state's GDP. 
It is also inspiring to see the government's rapidly increasing and substantial expenditure on social services, which will enhance the lives of millions of citizens. At Wipro, our conviction has always been that our responsibilities extend beyond profit making, to actively participate in and in contributing to society. And although our efforts will certainly not match those of the government, we try in our own modest ways to try and have impactful and earnest contributions to address the challenges of our society and in the state in particular. You may know that the Azim Premji Foundation, a not-for-profit organization, owns 66% of the economic interest of Wipro Limited. The foundation's work in Karnataka is extensive and direct, with a very strong collaboration with the state's education department that goes back many, many, many years. Our educational initiatives span over 12 districts in the state. We've recently expanded our efforts to the healthcare sector in Bengaluru, focusing on enhancing health systems and establishing clinics that serve 250 informal communities in the city. It is also one of our largest grant-making states where we support more than 121 organizations with a total commitment of 325 crores. I want to conclude by reaffirming the magic and the positivity and the support of the government of Karnataka, and it remains a strategic and a long-term investment destination for us. I thank the government for supporting Wipro and the IT industry over these many years. Thank you again for having me.